Did you know that in 1999's WCW NWO Thunder, wrestlers will try and convince you to pick them? Goldberg here. If you pick me, you'll find out who's next. <sighs> that is, unless you try and select Kevin Nash, who will straight up tell you to pick someone else. Hey, wait a second. I know what you're thinking. You want to be me like everybody else. Forget about it. You don't have the mental skills or the dexterity. Go on, go pick somebody else. Pick Hogan or some. Don't pick me. Move. Go. Go. Hello and welcome to Hidden Video Game Details, the series that aims to show you the things that you may have missed in your favourite games. Oh, and before we get started, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. That's right, after seven long years creating videos full time on this platform, I have finally been summoned by the father of all YouTube sponsorships. Now, because Raid have sponsored seemingly everyone on YouTube at this point, many people, myself included, write Raid off as just another stupid mobile game. But that's just not true. Raid not only offers tons of depth and strategy, but it's also on PC. A common complaint about Raid Shadow Legends is that you can spend a lot of time playing the game. But is that really a bad thing? I mean, we spend hours watching TV and playing games. Why not take some of that time and put it towards unlocking some of Raid Shadow Legends' excellent champions? Now, I know what you're saying right now, but Captain Excellent, Raid Shadow Legends lets you spend money to speed up your progress. And guess what? You're right. But Raid also has loads of players who are completely free to play and enjoy the game just as much, if not more, than those who spend money. I mean, there's no better feeling than actually earning something, right? I've also set up an in-game clan, which I've called the Eggheads. As it stands, I'm the only member. So please join me as I'm starting to get lonely. Ultimately, Raid Shadow Legends is free to play. And if you want to check it out for yourself, check my link in the description, which will also help support the channel. Oh, and if you're a new Raid player, you'll also get these goodies for free. A big thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. And without further delay, let's get started. So regular viewers of this channel will be well aware of my love for video game fish tanks. And more specifically, video game fish tanks that realistically drain when shot. Well, the first of today's details is perhaps the oldest example I found of a leaking fish tank. On the sixth mission in 2002 Splinter Cell, you can do this. Now, what makes this detail extra cool is if you break the tank, the fish will flop around a bit before dying. I mean, I said it was cool, I didn't say it'd be nice to watch. Right, this should be it. This should be the last time that we see Clone Drone in the Danger Zone in this series. Don't get me wrong, I've enjoyed covering the game, but what started as a small detail my son found has turned into the game featuring in four separate episodes, which understandably may annoy some people. Still, the details in Clone Drone have been cool, and today's detail is no different. We've already seen what happens if you try to bring a clone to the surface to help you do battle. Spoiler alert, the game doesn't let you and has several lines of dialogue ready just for those who try. But what if, in a fit of rage, you decide to kill your clones? Well, the game has dialogue for that too. Oh dear, this human is having some sort of mental breakdown. Perhaps it will carry this murderous energy onto the floor of the arena. Let's hope so. human is killing its clones. Perhaps it makes our robots look the same. I suppose there are no outward signs that these carry a copy of its consciousness. Analysis bot. Why would the human kill its clone? Since the human killed its clone, we must assume that the clone was planning the same thing. The mind boggles. Oh dear. That is not the optimal way to win this game. Now recently, I asked for your recommendations for funny video game achievements, with the only rule being that they had to be secret achievements, as those could be easily missed by the majority of players. It's at this point that I want to remind everyone, this series isn't about easter eggs, it's about finding the cool things that you may have missed in games, and some secret achievements fit that description perfectly. Now this secret achievement from Infra, the game where you play as a structural engineer, begins with a really long briefing in an office. Of course, you can skip the briefing and begin the game properly, or you could jump from this balcony.
So leaping from the 7th or 8th floor will reward you with the a bad case of the Monday's achievement. And what's really cool is that the date in game, the 8th of August 2016, was indeed a Monday. Now, if you're anything like me, then when you're stuck in a game, you just randomly try and interact with things until something happens. I mean, I'm not proud to admit it, but this particular method got me through some tough times in the older Resident Evil games. Well, if you employ that way of thinking in the 1993 point and click adventure Sam and Max Hit the Road, you can push Sam to breaking point. I can't pick that up. No, really, I can't pick that up. Are you dense? I can't pick that up. Read my lips. I can't pick that up. I give up. Now you've done it. You've broken Sam's spirit with your stupid attempts to pick up that silly object. In fact, if I didn't find his pitiful sobbing so amusing, I'd come out there and rip your limbs off. So repeatedly trying to pick up an item that can't be picked up will cause Sam to break down and cry. It's brilliant. Now, a couple of episodes ago, we discovered that waiting for too long in the shooting range in Rainbow Six Siege would cause Zero, the ranger's instructor, to complain about how long you were taking. Zero would also acknowledge himself if you chose to practice with Zero. Well, for those of you that are into your Rainbow Six Siege lore, you will know that Zero was friends with Finker's dad. And if you select Finker in the shooting range, Zero will acknowledge his friend's daughter. Good to see you're staying sharp, Lyra. Never enough training, like your dad. All right, kiddo. Let's see what you got. Now, in the last episode of this series, we found a grunt in Halo 3's final level that wasn't very happy with Master Chief. Well, in the final level of Halo 1, we can find another off-the-beaten-path grunt who can't wait to get back to the, and I quote, food nipple. Good thing that food nipple's waiting for me at the starship. Cause, man, if I worked up a big, crunchy thirst! So the concept of the Scribblenauts games has always intrigued me. The ability to write just about any word and then have that word come to life in game sounds brilliant. Unfortunately, the games themselves never really clicked with me. But the unmasked Scribblenauts game, which was a DC tie-in, has some really cool attention to detail that comic book fans will love. First up, if you summon Batman and Scarecrow, Scarecrow will be quick to use his fear toxin on the Dark Knight. But given Batman's famously big brain, he soon finds a solution. So, despite initially struggling, Bats will soon wear a gas mask to help defeat Scarecrow. Next up, if you summon Oracle, she will of course be in her wheelchair. However, if you destroy her wheelchair, she will do this. So, after the wheelchair is destroyed, Oracle, aka Barbara Gordon, will become Batgirl. Admittedly, this is the reverse of what happened in the comics, but I appreciate the effort. One of the more morbid details can be seen when placing the Joker and Red Hood in close proximity. So the Joker uses a crowbar when fighting Red Hood. But when he fights anyone else, he uses his laughing gas. This is a callback to when the Joker beat Jason Todd to death with a crowbar. And of course, the Red Hood was Jason Todd. The final Scribblenauts detail is even worse. If you place a refrigerator next to the Kyle Rayner version of the Green Lantern, he won't be very happy. So no matter where you place it, Kyle will always cry and fly away. The reason for this? Well, Kyle's girlfriend was killed and stuffed in a refrigerator. Yeah, for what looks like a kid's game, things can get a little dark. Now, I always say that if you want to find a hidden detail in a game, then do something that the game expects you to do, but doesn't necessarily want you to do. For proof of this, look no further than blood and bacon. Inside of the barn, the farmer is on his last legs. Or should I say leg? Well, if you shoot that leg, he will say this. Oh, ow. Oh, 
Ow! Ah, are you kidding me? You're gonna shoot me in the leg? That's not all. If you shoot the farmer in the head, instead of dying, he will have even more lines of dialogue, before eventually losing his temper. Hey, you know, that's really starting to get annoying. Oh, ouch! Oh, you got me. I don't think I'm gonna make it much longer. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Is that all you're gonna do right now? Hey, stop shooting your gun at me. The game is out there, idiot. Aw, oh, come on! Do you really want me to die? Why do you keep shooting me? Ha ha ha, yeah, I get it. Shoot the farmer in the face. Yup, make him bleed. Real funny. Every time you do that, I just get a little bit more angry each time a bullet goes whizzing past my head. So that's it. If you enjoyed this video, then a like is really appreciated. Be sure to subscribe for more Easter eggs and details from your favorite games. Thank you all for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.